you'll often see blind or search illustrated with a navigational example, very often using a map like this. The point of this short video is to, simply to make clear that very often such an example is misleading because blind search has no access to a map or any of the information that would, one would find on a map. Here's an example of going from Memorial Gym on the Bennett University campus to the Tennessee Supreme Court. Suppose we want to plan a route from Memorial Gym to the court. Very often in a navigational example of a search uh, using a map, we might represent the intersections of a street network as nodes in a graph and the intervals of street that link these intersections would be arcs between the nodes. In illustrating blind search, if we were searching for a route, we're somewhere in Midtown Nashville, we would want to know the state that was reached from one intersection by going down a street interval to the other intersection. In this particular case, we happen to be testing an action in the direction of our goal, the Tennessee Supreme Court. That all seems quite intuitive because we are, after all, outside the search space looking down at it. We can see the map. The search algorithm itself cannot see the map, however. And so when blind search is illustrated on a map, you'll see the demonstrator testing arcs that actually move away from the final goal state. Again, because they're illustrating a blind search algorithm that has no information about the direction or distance to a goal. And this is what can be quite counterintuitive. Nothing wrong with it, as long as all understand that the blind search algorithm doesn't have access to that kind of information, the kind of information that you can see quite readily by looking at the demonstration with a map. This is more in line with what our blind search algorithm would know. Suppose that rather than simply looking at a map, we were doing a blind search within Google Street View. Here we're at the start state, Memorial Gymnasium, and our goal is to reach the Tennessee Supreme Court. This image or picture of the Tennessee Supreme Court is the goal test. If we happen upon this in Google Earth, we will be able to recognize our goal. I'm looking outward now from Memorial Gym, and I'm looking down Vanderbilt Place. And going down Vanderbilt Place in Google Street View would be one possible action I could take from the Memorial Gym node. Another possible action I could take would be to go left out of Memorial Gym. Here I say towards Kensington and West End, but in fact in a blind search we'd have no way of knowing where we were going. We'd simply know that we could go left because there was this road there and we could take that action and find out where we ended up. Another possible action out of Memorial Gym is to go to the right. And again, I say towards Jess Neely and 25th Avenue Garage, which is only meaningful if you know the Vanderbilt University campus. But nonetheless, whether you know it or not, a blind search algorithm would have no idea where this road led. It would simply have to take the action and see where it ended up. So let's go back to our example of being at Memorial Gym and consider one possible action of going down Vanderbilt Place. This is going to take us to an intersection at the other end and this will be a child of the Memorial Gym node. We could also take the action of going left, and this is where we would end up. This would be the next intersection down the road at Kensington Place. Again, we didn't know this when we took the action, but this is something we would find after taking the action, and this would be a second child of the Memorial Gym node. Finally, we had a third action available to us of going right out of Memorial Gym, and this is where we'd end up. 25th Avenue Garage, Jess Neely, would be a third child of the Memorial Gym node. Notice that with none of these children of Memorial Gym, do we have any information about whether any of these is closer to the goal or not? Uh, we might be moving away from the goal, we might be moving towards the goal. The blind search algorithm simply has no idea. Just as a person who was unfamiliar with Nashville who was dropped into Google Street View and told to find a route from Memorial Gym to the Tennessee Supreme Court would have no idea where they were going. So let's abstract a bit and show this as a search space. The start state is Memorial Gym up at the top. The three possible endpoints we can get from taking the three possible actions or streets out of Memorial Gym are shown as children. At the left is Jess Neely with a red asterisk by it. In the middle is another option we could take. And the rightmost child here is uh, the node at Kensington Place. Now, you may know something like a depth-first uninformed search. 
we could take that node through just nearly, uh, explore the descendants in the search space of that node. It would turn out we would be going in the wrong direction, although our blind search algorithm would have no way of knowing it. But one possible node that you could end up deep down the search space would be, say, Wilson, Kansas, a nice little town in the middle of Kansas, but nowhere near the final goal that we want to reach. Whereas, if we were to eventually get to the right child, there with the purple asterisk, we might come upon, eventually, a path that took us to the Tennessee Supreme Court, shown in the bottom right with the green asterisk. And we could use the image from Google Maps and match it against the goal image that we were given initially. But again, the blind search algorithm has no information like one would find in a map. And so, a search through Google Street View gives us a much better intuition about the computational complexity that blind search algorithm is going to face when it searches from a start state looking for a goal state. Finally, you may have seen heuristic search algorithms, or you may not have. So you'll see that they're much more intuitively illustrated on a map, because in a heuristic search algorithm, you're given exactly the kind of information you might be given on a map. In particular, you're given estimated distances from a current state to a state, the kinds of things that you might be able to find or estimate from a map with a scale. So Memorial Gym is shown there at the bottom. One of the possible actions you'll remember that we could have taken out of Memorial Gym was to move down towards Kensington. Using a map, we could determine how close Kensington was from the Tennessee Supreme Court, at least a straight line distance, as the crow flies distance. Likewise, we could estimate a distance from Jess Neely in the 25th Avenue garage which, to the Tennessee Supreme Court. That would be a longer distance. And so in a heuristic search, we would be biased through Kensington rather than a search through Jess Neely. In this particular case, we're making use of exactly the kinds of information that we can find on the map.